All right, hello everybody. Happy Wednesday. Good to see you guys. A uh, little different stream tonight. We're going to configure X-Plane 11. So I have two goals for this stream. Um, X-Plane 11 needs to be up and running in its entirety. That didn't make a noise, and it's supposed to. Uh huh. Uh. -huh. Retard. There it goes. Retard. Retard. <laughs> we'll get to that here in just a second. Um, yeah. So. Good to see a squirrel. Welcome aboard. Just spent six hours setting up X-Plane 11. Oh man, I hope it doesn't take us that long. I've done this a couple times already, so I think I kind of know the, like, the flow to go through. I hope. Rudyism, good to see, man. Uh, who else have I missed? Uh, Goldsey, welcome aboard, sir. X-Plane Port, welcome aboard. Bellwar, welcome aboard. Where is Benny? Welcome aboard. Good to see you guys. F Kiwi, good to see you. Uh, Spodrum, good to see you. So yeah, a uh, little different stream tonight. We're going to set up X-Plane 11. Uh, I've, done the, I've done the configuration in the past. But I installed to a brand new location on my computer, and I have a completely fresh X-Plane 11. The only thing I have done is updated the AirAct data. Um, so we're going to fire this thing up, and we're going to get it going. So I'm going to talk about some of the stuff we're going to do to get this thing set up and configured. We're going to do everything. We're going to map controls. We are going to configure graphics. We are going to set up views on planes. We're going to copy some scenery. We're going to copy some planes. And it hopefully won't take that long. I'm aiming for like I'm aiming for like 90 minutes, <laughs> and we'll probably do some flying too while we're at it. So, um, yeah, X Plane 11. This is this is where X Plane. Oops, this is where X Plane 11 is out of my PC. Uh, there is one piece of software that we will be using. It is called GPU Z or GPU Z if you're from the other part of the world. Um, this thing is immensely useful. This tool is incredibly good, and this is going to help me to uh, to make sure that I'm squeezing the most out of my graphics card. And it's it's we're going to use this to to basically determine, do we need to pump more into graphics, or do we need to pump less into graphics? Um, and we'll talk about this pretty extensively here in a few minutes. But anyway, without further ado, let's fire it up. People have been asking me about this for a long time. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of staring at load screens tonight. Squirrel, it's good to see you, man. I, hope it, I really hope it doesn't take six hours to get all set up, but uh, uh, let's do new flight. I have fired this up once before just to make sure it all works, which is why it came up. And I have the Panthera installed, but we're just going to start in the 172, if I can find it. There we go. Cessna Skyhawk. Let's go to, uh, let's go someplace out in the middle of nowhere. KSMD, my uh, original home airport. It's clear skies, daytime, midday. Uh, oh, yeah. First up. Actually, there's a few things I want to do first. I want to go to graphics. I want to put her in windowed mode. Uh, like that. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go to the Imgur. I'm going to log into the Imgur. So I have, and, and you'll see this on, I think I saw, I'll, I'll put a link down below uh, for the YouTube stuff, but I have this on the original configuration video. Um, it, it's me waiting for my buddy and being a dick in Halo. No, it's actually, um, my entire joystick configuration in one, kind of one picture. And I put this on the original conf x -plane configuration video, so, um, I'm using this as a reference. Retard. 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 Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Cali Pilot, Cali Pilot. Welcome to the Beer of the Month Club, sir. Good to see you, my friend. Cheers. Thank you very much for your support, Cali Pilot. And B. Pruitt 72 is here for third, three months now. He gets his racist C. Cheers, my friend. Thank you very much. Mostly it was searching for and downloading installing stuff. Okay, great. Most of the stuff I've already got installed, and it's just a matter of copying it all over. It's hard going back to the UI, says, where is Benny? I don't know. We'll find out. I knew that I, I got pretty intimate with the old UI, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not super concerned. But this is what we're going to be setting up. So I have an X55 uh, throttle and joystick and a Cytec combat rudder pedal. So by the time we're done with uh, the initial configuration of controls they should look something like this so let's go through this um we'll hit on the we'll hit on the yeah uh we'll, we'll click the options up here we'll go to the joystick page and we are going to start with i guess combat rudder pedals that's fine so let's calibrate uh i don't that right there that's my right toe brake that's my left toe brake and that would be yaw yeah, I know. Okay, we'll get there. Don't worry about it, game. Don't worry about it, simulator. It's cool. Uh, let's start with the stick. Uncalibrated devices. Calibrate now. Okay. 
we're just going to move full range of motion, make sure everything looks good. Um, because it's SciTech, it's kind of a piece of crap. It's not actually centered. <laughs> uh, okay, leave them centered. Let it do its thing. I don't know how big of a null zone it ends up adding here. I hope we see control sensitivity. We want no stability augmentation. <clears throat> I like 50% on the control responses. And I'm quite all right with that. Um, okay. So let's see here. Stick, we're going to undo the twist. So twist will do nothing because I don't use that. Um, that's the roll. That's the pitch. So it's got all that all set up. Now we're going to clear all of this crap off. Clear it all off. Get rid of it all. Do nothing. Do nothing. Do nothing. Do nothing. Okay. So starting with the point, starting with the hat switch. All right. So for me, hat switch up is tilt up. So that's going to be, it's tilt up. It, it probably has changed. Uh, oh, here we go. Yes. Uh, I can use the same commands, which is great. So tilt up. Apply that. And then if I go down, that guy right there, I'm going to go custom and edit, and we're going to tilt down. So this, these, are my, these are my views. Um, tilt down. I already like this. I like this part a lot better, um, setting up the controls and whatnot. And then, so the, the, when I'm looking around the cockpit, I use my point of view hat. That's, that's this, this thing right here. So that's up, and that's down. Not actually... No, that's actually right. And then we have left and we have right. So let's do right first. So let's come down here and we're going to go to custom. We could use one of them in one of these guys here, but for the left, so for the up and down, I use the standard rate. And then for left and right, are, I, use, I use fast. Um, so it's going to be pan. Uh, which one are we? Oh, hey, what are we on anyway? Oh, crap. No! Go back. <laughs> Stick. Okay, let's do right. So this is right. Right, 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 right. Custom. Edit. I lost my controls. Uh, pan right fast. Pan right fast. Apply that. And then that's pan left fast. So I like, I like the up and down to be slow, and I like the left and right to go fast. Um, it, that's just, that's, that's kind of what works for me. So uh, custom. Edit that. And we are pan left fast. Pan left fast. Apply that. And we're good there. Okay. So the POV switch is done. I don't do anything with the corners. Um, the corners are tough to di difficult to hit. And, and, and honestly, I just don't find them to be super useful. So we don't use the corners. Uh, at least I don't. Uh, next up is going to be the trigger. Four. That is going to be... Uh, servos toggle. So that's my autopilot arm. So I use number four on here, the trigger. I use that to turn the autopilot on and off. And to do that in X-Plane, you have servos toggle. So we'll punch that in right there. And then number five. Let's see here. Number five is up here. I don't think I use that for anything, do I? What is that? That's A. No, I actually don't do, I don't do anything with that button right now. So we're just going to... Um, we'll leave that as... To yeah, we'll leave that as toggle breaks regular effort. Um, just in case I want to like hit the brakes for some reason. Um, but I don't actually do anything with that. Coming up, number six. Number six over here. This is a very important button. This is my ATC button. Contact ATC. So that's the button I use to talk to, to, talk to Pilot Edge. Uh, I push that button down, and I talk to Pilot Edge. We have the number seven, the pinky trigger. Uh, the pinky trigger is aileron trim center. So edit that. Aile how do I spell aileron? Aileron trim center. So I use the aile I use the aileron trim pretty um, pretty religiously uh, to help myself keep stabilized because that's just how X plane works. <laughs> X plane likes to kind of screw you over with the um, um, with your with your with your roll. So I use I use the aileron trim pretty religiously, and I have that pinky trigger there uh, to keep everything under control to basically recenter it as I'm as I as I need to. Uh, Samory22, just finished watching the LGA stream from last week, only got the first takeoff from DCA, it was enough for me to want to drink a bunch, a lot of beers, enjoy. Samory22, thank you very much, Ben, I appreciate your support, cheers. Okay, so that was the pinky trigger, then we go to number eight, um, so this is going to be the hat switch up here, actually let's do this, let's also, let's run down here, let's grab number five, so five is the, five is the other, pick. I don't even know what this is called, D. 
Um, that's the other pinky trigger. And that is rudder trim center. So number five is rudder trim center. So what I do is aileron trim center, rudder trim center. So I can hit, I basically can hit six and five and just go boom, boom. And I can make sure that my ailerons and my rudders are both centered, like immediately. And that's useful for general aviation stuff for me. Um, it's useful when I'm coming in on approach, like if I want to center those trims up immediately, and then I now I have, you know, I have complete control over with my stick. So that's something that works fantastically well for me. Um, your mileage may vary. So we did pinky trigger. So we're moving up here to the hat switch one. That's going to be 8, 9, 10, and 11 here. Um, hat switch one. So up and down, I don't do anything with. So we're just going to edit those and turn them to nothing. Nothing. You get nothing. Do nothing. And down will do nothing. And then I have left and right. So left and right. Um, let's see here. Hat one right is my rudder trim right. So this is what I use for rudder trim. Hat one right is rudder trim. Hat one left is rudder trim. So this is rudder trim right. Rudder trim right. Apply that. Rudder trim left. Apply that. So right, left. And then we move down to hat switch number two. This one I actually do use a lot. Um, so hat switch number two is my sort of key. Is This is my main This is my main trim switch. So that's this guy right here. That's the, um, the gray one. This is my main trim switch. So I don't use a lot of rudder trim um, just because of... I, like, X-Plane, I think, doesn't behave with rudder, tr rudder trim quite the way that it should. So I use mostly aileron trim. And I use, obviously, um, you know, um, elevator trim. So let's set that. So we go number 12. So that's hat switch two up. That's going to be pitch down. Trip, pitch trim down. So edit that. Pitch trim down. Apply. And then pull that one down. Number 14. That's going to be pitch trim up. Pitch trim up. And then left is going to be elevator or um, aileron. Aileron trim left. Aileron trim left, and the right one, number 13, that's aileron trim right. So left and right. So I have my trims, I have my rudder trims, I have nothing up here. Oh, you know what, actually I do have something on that one now. That one up is toga, engage toga power. Uh, not a lot of planes use that, but I do, I do H1 up is, is my engage toga. Um, Pinky trigger is aileron trim center. Got a contact ATC. Uh, that button I don't really do much with, but that toggles the brakes in case I need to, I guess. Uh, we have the trigger, which is servos. That's the eight, that's um, autopilot. And then on the back here, we have rudder trim center and aileron trim center. What is B? B landing gear. Well, no, 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 no. What is the B button? There's apparently some unknown hidden button that is labeled as B. D. Oh! Oh, yeah, that one. I, for I forgot one. I forgot one. So, B. That's number four right here. This is another extraordinarily important button for me. This is my view, view recentering. So, you'll see me do a lot of pan left, or pan left, pan right, pan up, pan down, and maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here and there. And then I can come back and I can nail that button right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind that one to cockpit location number five. And so what that does is whatever I've set to four on my numpad as, my, as a location, I push that button and it goes right back to it. And we'll demonstrate that once we're, once, we're in the, um, once we're in the plane here. So my stick is all set up now. That's it. I don't need to do anything else with that. Let's move over to the throttle. The throttle gets a little bit more complicated because we got some axes and some of that stuff to work with. So um, disconnect the, or I'm going to unlock the split throttle. And we're gonna move. We're gonna move some stuff around and see what we got. So, this one right here. Actually, I guess we'll start with that one. That one. That's going to be throttle number two. That's my right throttle. This is gonna be throttle number one. That's my left throttle. I think these need to be reversed. I'm pretty sure these have to be reversed. But we'll come back and check on that here in a few minutes. We need to calibrate too. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, that's good too. Okay. We 
What are you, what are you doing? Okay. Exercise that, exercise those. Okay, fantastic. Uh, make sure, okay, stability augmentation is still off. Uh, so I don't know why there's no image here. Um, that's, <laughs> that's a bit inconvenient to not have the image on the throttle. So um, let's do this. Let's pop you over there. And let's pop you right here. And you can see what I'm working with. So uh, we set the left and right throttles up. Left and right throttles up. Um, so let's see here. The top axis, nope. What is axis number two? Axis number two. That one right there. So that axis number two is the, um, that is the three. That's rotary three on the X55. That's that guy right there. That's going to be mixture. And actually, we're going to turn that off most of the time. I'm not even going to bind that most of the time. But, um, uh, so I was talking to somebody about this in Discord today. If you have something bound to your mixture and you are flying a jet and you happen to bump the mixture, even if it's just like a t a innocent tap, a little bit of noise in the joystick or whatever, your engines will shut off. So I recommend, unless you are flying a plane that actually needs to use mixture, that you don't bind mixture. My pro tip of the day. Um, next up, we'll take that. So rotary number four, that's that guy right there. That's prop pitch. Uh, so is that actually called prop pitch? It's called prop. Just prop. So we have mixture, we have prop. This guy, this is another very important one. So this is the um, the top rotary up here. I don't, I don't, I think that's F rotary. Um, the F rotary. That is view zoom. So I have a quick way to just zoom in and zoom out. Um, I don't use that a ton on the stream, but I use it a lot when I'm flying by myself. So view zoom, and we're gonna. Uh, I have that reversed. We'll figure out. We'll figure out if that's actually the case. Uh, next is gonna be this guy down here. That is the rotary underneath. That is rotary uh, G. So rotary G. We're gonna bind that to uh, speed brakes. Speed brakes, or maybe we aren't. There we go. Speed brakes. So what I can do is I can then hit that, I basically hit that thing, and I can pull the speed brakes out to whatever level I need to. And it works pretty well. So we got throttle one, throttle one, throttle two, mixture, prop, speed brakes, view zoom. Uh, we'll keep on going down. Uh, we're done with axes. So the axes are all, the axes are all finished. The axes six and axes seven, that's the, like, mouse pointer. Um, and that definitely doesn't work. That mouse pointer is kind of a piece of crap and doesn't really do much. <laughs> Pedro, do get to see you, man. Tim P.E., welcome aboard. <laughs> I'm gonna have to donate the time to put a giant picture of my face as his desktop. Dude, I haven't had a picture on my desktop in years. Years. Uh, Jay Snap, good to see you, man. Pilot Meister, good to see you. Chevy Rules, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard, Mr. Chevy. Peter Hoover, welcome aboard. Maverick, welcome aboard. I'm sorry I'm missing people today. I'm 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 focused, man. I'm focused. So now we're gonna go through the long <sighs> the long part, and that is setting up the rest of these buttons on the joystick. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that we're going to set up here. So I'm just going to start from the top. I'm going to start at the very top. If I push the rotary up at the very top down, I think that's actually nothing. F. <laughs> okay, that one doesn't do anything. <laughs> Good way to start, right? Good way to start. Um, the bottom one though is important. Button number two, which is the rotary down here. That's that's the G rotary. Um, we're going to set that to uh, speed brakes retract one. So, speed brakes retract one. So by doing that, by setting this to speed brake re brakes retract one, what happens is that when your speed brakes are all the way in the full and upright locked position, the speed brakes are not out, and you hit that button, that engages the the um, that engages the spoilers in, in almost every single plane. So you tap that sucker, you'll see the you'll see the spoiler you'll see the spoiler bar kind of either either go up or it'll come down just a little a little bit of a touch, and that'll engage the spoilers so that when you land. The big thing comes up, and your your plane slows down. Um, and hang on one second here. One second here. So yeah, that's 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 an important one. Um, I, I and that's one that I use constantly because a lot of planes, it's either very difficult to engage the spoilers or impossible in some cases. So, speed brakes retract one. Uh, very, very, very nice one to have. Um, so that's the top rotary, which does nothing, the bottom rotary, which does speed brakes, and then we're gonna move on to the backside. I don't have a, I don't have a picture of the backside of the, um, 
the back side of the throttle here. So there's two buttons. There's two buttons on throttle number two. Okay, the far right one, the far right one is um, one of my favorite ones when I find out exactly what it's called here. And that is autopilot heading sync. So autopilot, autopilot heading sync. So what that one does, and th well, this one works with most planes, what that one does is when I push that button, it syncs the heading, it syncs the heading bug up to whatever heading I currently have. It's amazing. So if you want to, if you want to crank the autopilot on in heading mode, and you've got it all set up and configured and ready to go, and you've turned, you're like, okay, now autopilot, we'll turn that on with the servos, and then um, I want to, I want to, I want to go heading hold on my current heading. Um, you just push that button, syncs up the heading, and you're going in that direction now. Awesome button to have. Right next to that one, that's the gear toggle. That's also, I guess, fairly important. Um, landing gear toggle. So that's on throttle number two in the back behind these guys. And then on the throttle number one, you have a rocker switch. There's a there's an up and then there's a down. So the up, that's going to be flaps up. Flaps up a notch. And then the down, that's flaps down a notch. Piece cake. Okay, so there's that. Um, there's, there's the toggle switches then. You have the toggle switches over here. I don't really use those for anything. Um, I've, I've, they're, they're very difficult. They're very difficult to get to. And I just generally am not interested in, in trying to futz around with grabbing one of those. So I don't use those for much. However, the toggle switches down here on the bottom, switch one and two, switch three and four, switch five and six, these three guys, I use these all the time. And these are my primary way of manipulating the autopilot. So if you see me changing a heading bug, that's switch one and switch two. So switch number one becomes autopilot heading up. Autopilot heading up. Apply that. And then switch number two, which is pulling this rocker switch back, is autopilot heading down. And in that similar vein, we go to switch three and four in the middle here. Okay, switch three is going to be OBS one up. So this, it, when I'm flying slant alpha, this allows me to set the course knob while I'm, while I'm hands-on. Basically, while I'm hands-on stick, I can use that and set the course knob one way or the other. So that's going to be OBS one up. And then that's going to be OBS one down. Sorry. I got a text that's <laughs> slightly worrying. Like, nothing that's going to affect us tonight, but slightly worrying. So OBS one up and OBS one down. And then the last one, we have autopilot nose up and autopilot nose down. So switch five and switch six. So if I push forward on this rocker and go to switch five, that is autopilot alt or autopilot Reach on. Uh, Reach nose on. down. Reach on. Autopilot nose down. Apply that. And that guy is autopilot nose back. Nose up. So what that allows me to do is um, uh, when you're in autopilot, you can be in pitch you can be in pitch hold mode, you can be in vertical speed mode, or you can be in IS mode. And that rocker switch, depending on what mode you're in, will adjust those values accordingly. So like if I'm in the aerobask and I'm in vertical speed mode and I push this and I push this rocker forward for autopilot nose down, It'll actually decrease my my ver the, my vertical speed that I'm showing on my autopilot. Whereas if I pull it back, it increases the vertical speed. So if I want to go, say I'm 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 departing and I'm at 1,500 feet per minute on departure, and that's what the vertical speed is set for. But I want the vertical speed to be a thousand. I can hit that rocker switch, bring it down to a thousand, and I'm good to go. Okay, so there's that. And then the last one we've got HH. I don't really use these all that much, but HH. Um, HH is this rocker switch down here, or this this four-way. So if I push that one, actually no, we have a couple more to do. If I push that one forward, that's going to be um, autopilot altitude down. So I don't use these a lot, but it allows me to it allows me to set the autopilot altitude with a rocker switch. I don't even know why I had this bound, but we're gonna we're gonna bind it anyway. So autopilot altitude down, and then pulling that back button twenty six. That's going to be autopilot altitude up. And last but not least. Last but not least, we have the red button. That one right there. That is, that is button number E. Button number E is toggle thrust reversers. <laughs> that is very important. So toggle thrust reversers, like so. Pop that in right there. So we hit that button, toggles the thrust reversers, puts us in beta mode if we're on a turboprop. We give it gas. We slow down. We pull it all the way back. We hit that button again. It toggles them back. That's it.
all of my buttons have now been synced up. So, once you configure your joystick, there's one very, 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 very important step I'm going to tell you to do. Just close the, close the sim. Explain this totally out of memory. How the hell did that happen? Um, I don't know. I have no memory issue. I don't... Whatever. Um, close the sim out. Uh, let X-Plane save all those settings so that you don't lose them down the road. Because apparently it's going to lose them anyway. Dude, if it, if it lost all those settings, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be real upset here. Okay, it kept all the settings. For whatever reason, though, it didn't keep the graphics settings. Let's go back to windowed mode. Pop you there. Hit done. So we've set all our controls up. Let's, fire, let's actually fire this thing up and let's start doing some graphics tuning. So we're going to pop in the Cessna Skyhawk. We're going to go to the middle of nowhere. KSMD. We'll go Smithfield, my local my local airport, or my original local airport when I was back where I grew up. Make it daytime, and we'll start the flight. It should save preference when you exit the preferences window. Yeah, I don't trust it. <laughs> I do not trust it. Uh, broad AG, good to see you, man. Wayne, welcome aboard, sir. G4, welcome aboard. Anybody else I've missed? AJ, good to see you. Silverbird Actual, welcome aboard. Jay Patel, good to see you. All right. So, if we want to quickly run through all the things that we just set up and configured, our throttle works, our mixture works, Our rudders work, as do our uh, tow brakes. We have control surfaces. We don't have any views set up. That's okay. I can... Oh, man, my heading... My, my buttons for heading and my buttons for course are not working, so... I mean, something's buggered up with the plane. Um, so, yeah. We got we to gotta start here. We got to start. Trim's working. Fantastic. There's probably no aileron trim in this plane. Is there even rudder trim in this thing? I'd assume there's rudder trim, but I don't know. Who knows? All right. So one of the things I mentioned um, is I, I talked about the view stuff. So uh, I'm going to pull the parking brake first of all. Uh, get rid of you. Where is the park brake? Is there a park? There has to be a parking brake in this thing, right? I mean, I know that they never work in these planes, but there has to be... Well... There's a park brake if I hit the key, if I hit the V key. <laughs> Toggle brakes full. So um, I'm going to set this view here to four. So control and four on the numpad, and I'll set this one over here to. The prop seems to be moving as the view moves, but whatever. And I'll set this view over here to six. So I have four. And I have six. So one of the things I told you was how I do my views. So we have pan up, pan down. Oops, I got those wrong. Pan left and right don't work. So let's go back to joystick. Stick. And that's the wrong way. So pan right fast. And then that one's going to be pan left fast. Custom. Pan left fast. Apply that. There we go. So we got left, we got right, we got up, and we got down. So no matter where I'm looking, what I can do now, so I bound that I bound that one key that's like, you push the button and it takes, so this is position four, okay? And I look left and I look up, and then if I hit that button on my joystick, so that's one of my pinky fingers, or one of my, one of my outlier, I always look back to my main view. So you'll see me, you know, check left, check right, and then go back to the main view, and that's how I do it. No rudder trim in a... In a 172, you need a cutlass for a rudder trim. Got it. Aussie Benny Edge, good to see you, man. BJM, welcome aboard. Kremers, good to see you. How oh, am I getting such good framers with the 4790K? Because a 4790K is a pretty damn good processor. Pretty good processor. Um, so we haven't even touched graphics Retard. settings yet. Retard. Um, Retard. BJM, BJM, I missed your subscription, man. Welcome to the Beer of the Month Club, BJM. Thank you very much for your support, sir. Cheers. And Sanctus Fortis, also welcome to the Beer of the Month Club. Thank you very much for your support. 
Cheers, Macro. Thank you guys both. All right. So we've got our controls set up. We've got some basic views set up. Um, there's graphical stuff that we can start doing, but I don't want to do any of it yet. So what I want to do is I want to set up and configure. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I want to start doing some scenery stuff, and I want to. Um, uh, I also want to get X Enviro installed. So I'm sure that the X Plane clouds are nice and pretty, and and people have told me that they're great and fantastic. But my problem with X Plane is with X Plane 11 is not the clouds; it's the fact that everything looks so washed out. All right. So I think I think it all looks very washed out. So the next step is going to be to quit X Plane, and then to go to the downloads folder, downloads, and install X Enviro. Yes. English. Next. I agree. Sure. And browse. So we'll go to you. Nope, not you. We'll go to you. And then more data and X Plan 11. And resources, plugins. So X Plan 11, resources, plugins, X and Viral. Great. That's it. <laughs> installed just have to activate it when I activate it I'll have to make sure my screen disappears here alright so we'll fire X-Plane 11 back up what TCV good to see you, man Ernie the cat welcome aboard we'll just do resume last flight yeah I don't like reshade I don't, I don't like the stuff that, um, that like injects itself into like OpenGL and DirectX um, I've never been a big fan of reshade and kind of all that stuff. Um, I'd rather have, I'd rather, I, I just, I like X and Viral. I like what, I like everything about what X and Viral has done to my sim. And as a result, I will continue to use X and Viral. So that's going to fire up. Quantity, welcome aboard, man. Zach, Rich, good to see you. All right. Okay. So here's the part where I'm going to disappear the screen. Rest assured, the screen is still there. It's doing screen things. So I have to register X and Viral. Okay. That. Please tell me I don't have to type that thing in. Great. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's add some weather. Um, let's go to, how do I, how do I add weather? That's going to be flight setup and let's just make it broken. Oh, actually, no, I have to use real world weather, don't I? I can't do that. So let's go back to X and <laughs> let's go back to the weather. Let's set that to nothing. It has to be clear. And we'll go to X and Viro, turn that on. Lock the sim up. Yeah, okay. All right. A little bit darker, not quite so washed out. Um, I'm going to say, please, are there any clouds? There's probably no clouds here, are there? There we go. We got some fog. We can deal with fog. What I'd really like are some clouds, though. The airport that we're at has no clouds. That's okay. Um, oh, there's some clouds out there. Okay, there's some clouds that are popping in. All right, so X Enviro. Uh, my X Enviro settings are uh, probably going to infuriate some people because what I do is I come here and I hit the light button. <laughs> and then I raise the detailed range to uh, 30 kilometers. No, sorry, 15 kilometers. Wait, I have the settings on Imgur. I have the settings on Imgur. Because people have asked me for these. Right there. Okay. So this is what, this is what we're going to set up. Um, zero, zero, hundred, hundred. Breaking action, wind shear, and thunderstorms. Weather interval update level five. Maximum range, I leave it a hundred, a hundred, um, hundred uh, kilometers. Minimum visible range is 30 kilometers. Detail range is 15 kilometers. 
Reflections are zero, and shadow is also zero. Because I don't like, I don't, I really don't like the cloud shadows. I guess those are going to be, no. Detail 30. No, detail 15. Minimum 30. And 100 there. Great. And then we go upper atmosphere. Lower atmosphere. Uh, 3D cloud passing effect. We will leave the shadows under overcast. We'll turn on 2D raindrops, 3D landing light effect, and light scattering. I can turn post-processing on, but that makes everything super blue, and I don't like that. So post-processing stays off. X-plane scattering percentage goes to 20%. And we'll leave the fog cut off at zero. I don't know what that fog does. Um, we're going to do optimum on there. Down to 60, 60, 60, 60, all the way down. So that's X Enviro. So we have clouds, we have weather, we have all of our settings going. Now we need to optimize for frames. But we're not going to do that until we get some scenery. So, one more time, I'm going to close out X-Plane. So we, we're, getting 40, we're getting 45, 50 frames sitting here at a lightly populated, nothing going on airport with whatever the default settings are. Um, is that good or bad? I have no idea. So the next step is going to be to symbolically link my global scenery folder to the other global scenery. So we're going to call this one old global scenery. And then we're going to open up command prompt. So let's go to you, CD. Uh, so we're going to go E colon and CD. Uh, can I make that bigger? Nah, you guys can see that. You guys can see what's going on here. So let's go CD. Uh, X plane 11. And here we are. So we're going to do the command. Um, make link slash J. Big J. And it's going to be um, E colon slash. Uh, we'll put the quote there. E colon slash X plane 10 slash. And it's going to be global. C oh, you know what? Ah, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. I did this wrong. I did this wrong. Nope. Don't listen to me. Do not listen to me. Global scenery stays where it's at. Custom scenery gets renamed. Yeah. <laughs> that would work better. Uh, I will have a link to all of that stuff. Yes. All of that stuff I will link to you guys um, uh, uh, in, the, um, uh, in the YouTube video when this thing goes up. And I can, I can send it to you independently as well. But yeah, there will be a link that goes up for this. Um, so we're going to custom scenery. And there, so I'm going to make a, I'm, I'm going to, I'm setting up a symling. I'm setting up a junction from E colon, um, target's going to be E colon X plane 10 custom scenery. And we're going to junction that onto, uh, G colon X plane scenery. So G colon slash, uh, X plane scenery. Boom. System cannot find the path specified. Of course it can. Why would it be? Hmm. Oh, you know what? I think I got these two backwards. Let's try this. Ah, yeah, I got them backwards. Okay, so it's make link slash J, G. <laughs> this is what happens when you do it live. <laughs> G colon slash X plane scenery. Uh, ah, crap, okay. If I could learn how to type here. Not create a file when that link already exists. So wait, actually the first one should have worked. That should have worked. Why didn't that work? The woes of doing it live. Oh, X plane 11. I'm sorry. Let's try this again. Make link slash J E colon X plane 11 custom scenery to G slash X plane scenery. Yes. We junctioned it. So what did that do? So we go back to our X plane 11 folder. We now have a link to custom scenery. It's got a little arrow on it. If I open that up, ah, it's all my custom scenery. It's all my ortho scenery. It's all there. Um, that's it. I put all of my X plane custom scenery on an external drive, um, on an external hard drive within a folder. Okay. So we have custom scenery now. Close out. And let's go open up. Actually, let's bring it all back. I need to go to explain 11. So PC, E, 
X-Plane 11, and we'll load that up. So now all of my custom scenery has been loaded. <laughs> had symbolic links in Unix for decades. I know, man. Sim links are um, useful. Fun and exciting and useful. Okay, so now... Um, so we're, gonna, we're actually going to start tuning some frames now. And uh, I, I tune my frames in high-density urban areas. So in this case, we're going to start in Boston. Um, thought I heard a sound. So we're going to start in Boston. And this is now it's going to take a little longer to load because it has to excuse me has to load all the ortho photo stuff in. But hopefully not too bad. We're just chilling, waiting on the load screen. Do, 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 do. All the overlays, everything. Yep, so if I show you, um, if I show you that folder, so we'll go back to my PC. We will go to the Seagate expansion drive, so that's an external hard drive. We go to X-Plane back, or X-Plane scenery. This is all of my scenery, everything. Everything I have installed. And if I go all the way down to uh, the overlays, there's my overlays. There's my orthophoto. And it even has my scenery.ini in here as well. So my scenery packs I and I are in there. So it's going to load everything just as it did in x 10. No issues at all. Um, I don't want any stability augmentation. <laughs> That's my reason, John. Um, stability augmentation is uh, x -Plane's way of dampening the effects of everything. And... I don't like stability augmentation. I want to actually fly the plane and not have um, um, and, and not have X-Plane make it easier for me. G4, man, you have to stop that, buddy. All right. So off the bat, I'm going to say we're doing okay. So now we're going to start looking up here at the, 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 the frame rates. So currently we're running 30 frames per second. We're in Boston. Um, X Enviro is on and completely lying to me because this is definitely not the weather that we have outside right now. But that's okay. So we're running, in, in the default 172, we're running 30 frames per second. And this is with everything stock. Um, the frame time is three milliseconds per frame. The CPU is taking three, po is taking three milliseconds to render. The GPU is only taking 0 0.01 seconds or whatever this i don't know the gpu number is very small so what this is telling me is that the cpu is doing most of the work and the gpu is not really doing much i can verify this by pulling over my cpu graph and i can say oh hey look the cpu is at 30 percent so let's do change graph to logical processors we see one cpu getting the crap kicked out of it and everything else is you know doing its thing and that's that's what i expect to see from x-plane um, it's only able to use one, uh, one, one, one thread or one processor, one processor at a time. So, but the GPU is not doing anything. So that's the CPU. And if I pull over GPU Z, what do we got here? The GPU is running at 1600 megahertz. Um, the fan and whatever, whatever, whatever. The GPU load is 36%. So when I'm at, I'm in a position right now where I can add more pretties at the expense of, um, like nothing we can just add more pretties so let's pull that over there let's grab our configuration we're going to go to graphics uh the first thing that i will do is i'm going to turn the texture quality all the way to maximum that's going to require a sim reboot we'll do that here in a second so we're going to we're going to bring the texture quality all the way to maximum so the other thing that we're going to look at is the memory usage so currently we are using five gigabytes of vram i have an eight gigabyte card so by process of math, I have um, 2.7 more gigabytes, which which I with which I can work with. Um, so we're gonna try we're gonna try cranking the texture quality to maximum. We're gonna see what happens to our memory usage. It may actually be too high. We may not be able to do anything with that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna leave the uh, we can actually we can try turning the anti uh, well, you know what? let's leave the anti aliasing here. We're gonna leave the anti aliasing on 2x for now. Um, we'll leave draw scenery on for the time being. The field of view needs to be changed because that's. That's closer to what I let's see here. Is that more like what I want? 
Oh, yes. That's a better field of view for me. Great. All right. That was just making the... So I didn't feel like I was so parked in. Um, reflection detail, I'm turning all the way down to nothing. Minimal, whatever. Uh, number of world objects will leave high. Uh, there's a few more things I wanted to set up. Uh, turn off the ATC. We're going to come back to... No, no, no. I don't want in cockpit. Eh, whatever, I'll leave that on, I guess. Sure, whatever. Flight models per frame, I like to leave that at four. They tell me that's better at four. I don't know if it's actually true or not. No, no. We'll turn the hypoxia off. Show AT, AT. I don't care about that. Leave that off. And we'll turn off runway follow contours. Because we are flying online, so that's important to keep that off. So that's good. Sound, graphics, network, data output. Don't need to worry about any of that stuff. We're going to come back here for this, though. Because <laughs> um, I think... Actually, no. I don't know. Actually, i got to figure out what to set up for flight, too. But we'll do that in a second. Okay. So there's that, and then the last thing I want to do is, before I forget about it in my flight configuration, um, AI aircraft, and we're going to turn off AI aircraft completely. Done. Okay. So the AI, AI aircraft are off. We've mucked around with some of the graphics settings. We've turned off um, runway follow contours, and we're going to go ahead and give this thing a reboot. So let's close the sim one more time. Quit. So when I fire X-Plane back up, what I'm going to be looking for is my VRAM usage. Um, so I increase, the, I increase the resolution of the textures that we're going to load, and I'm going to make sure that the VRAM usage does not exceed what I'm able to do. Let's go new flight. AI aircraft should be turned off, which they are. Uh, we set all that stuff up. Skyhawk, Boston. Great. Boom. Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if your stuff is too sensitive, um, you can set up a curve. So the curve is going to make it so that the early part of your, uh, the early part of your, like, if you push the, if you push the, um, the pedals a little bit, uh, they don't, they, 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 basically the curve means that the more you push the pedals, the more they, they work. If you don't push the pedals a lot, they don't really work that much. And so that actually is a really good way to do sensitivity stuff. So I have 50% curves set on my joystick and my pedals so that I can do nice, fine little movements and not have the plane jerk all over the place. Foos 1V. Thank you very much for two months, my friend. Cheers, buddy. Appreciate your support. Nick F01, good to see you, man. No more null zones. They got rid of the null zone completely, did they? Interesting. Okay. So we'll load this sucker in. We're going to look around. What we're going to notice is not really anything has changed. Okay, so we're still hovering around 30. Our GPU time is still pretty low. Um, if we pop outside the plane, our frames are also good. We're going to pop all the way up here. We're going to look out, and we're going to see that. Yep, okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right, so let's go back in our settings. Let's start. Let's start messing around with stuff. Well, actually, you know what? Before I start messing around with stuff, let's check our VRAM usage. I apparently closed GPU-Z. GPU-Z? Open up. GPU-Z is telling me that VRAM usage is at 5 gigabytes. Perfect. So I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about I'm going to leave the textures where they're at and I'm not going to worry about further VRAM usage. Um Looking around, things are a little hazy. That's okay, because Boston's weather was kind of poopy today. Um, I'm missing... So we got... I'm missing some reflections on the water. Um, I'm... Probably can turn up the anti-aliasing, so let's start with that. Let's pop you open. Um, let's... I don't know. Let's see what happens if we make this... Let's see what happens if we make it medium reflection detail. Um, let's go... Vis let's just... You know what? Let's just turn everything up. Let's see what happens when we turn it all up. Watch it come to a screeching halt. Iowa Flyer, good to see you, man. Clocky, welcome aboard. Plane Man 1738, welcome aboard. John Flies, good to see you, John. Computer Flying, good to see you. Torpedo, welcome aboard. Mr. Cubs 22, good to see you. Crazy Diamond, good to see you as well. Welcome aboard, sir. Do I have U.S. Cities Boston installed? No, I'm running uh, Mr. X. Mr. X is Boston. Oh, dude, we're going to break it. We're going to break it a lot right here. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. We killed it. Actually, we didn't do too bad. So we're in Boston, and we've got 24 frames per second. Um, our CPU time has gone up, as has our GPU time. So I'm assuming... What, I'm, what I think has happened... Uh, so we're going to do some experimentation now. So we turned everything up. Uh, I'm going to start with turning the reflection details back to minimum. Because if there's one thing I don't like, it's the reflections. That didn't actually change the frame rate. So the frame rate stayed at 25 when we did that. All right, so the reflections don't actually matter. The reflections seem to be a... Um, I'm going to leave them on low, but they seem to be a, a GPU-oriented thing. So let's turn the visual effects down. The visual effects coming down didn't actually change anything. Okay, so we're still at 25 frames per second. Our CPU is still bludgeoning itself. The GPU is still not doing much. All right, so we can turn it. We can turn the effects back up. That means the culprit is world objects. So if we bring the world objects down to medium, we should see a massive increase in performance here. Are the specs below still accurate? Um, the only difference is the specs below may not have the fact that I'm running a uh, 1070. Jacob, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Matrix, welcome aboard. Yeah, world objects definitely blows up the CPU. So I'm gonna have to, we're going to turn that back to medium. My goal is to get 30 to 40 frames per second. Boom! Look at that. 40. 35 to 40. Perfect. I'm on medium objects, which is maybe a little bit of a bummer, but I'm running orthophoto, so it doesn't actually, like, it doesn't really matter. So, we're in Boston. We got X Enviro doing its thing. You know, we've got some, you know, we've got some clouds, we've got some weather and whatnot, and we're running 35 frames per second. I can live with that. So the next thing to do is pop in the airplane, and let's, let's, let's see what the airplane looks like when we get it up in the air. So, uh, parking brake is now, not, is now disabled. Oh, there's a parking brake right there. Parking brake's disabled. Let's just take this thing off. Let's just blast this thing up in the air. V1 rotate. Because the frames that you get when you're outside the plane tend to be very different than the planes that you get inside the frame. Or inside the plane. Um, and when we change to some different planes, that's going to become very, very, very apparent. So we'll go buzz the tower. So what I'm testing is I'm, I'm basically looking at the city. I'm looking at a dense urban area. And my goal is to keep the frames more or less the same. So the frames are still running between 30 and 40. Now, let's pause that there. Let's go back. Let's turn the world objects back to high. We'll give that a chance to reload. And we'll see what that does. That's probably going to drop the, planes below, the frames below, below 30. So my goal is to keep the frames always above 30. And now we can get into some stuff with like, F, I think FJ11 or FJC or something like that. Um, there's an add-on out there that does automatic level of detail. So we can get into some of that and that's going to, you know, kind of adjust the objects to try to keep us at a target frame rate. And I might end up playing with that down the road too. But I'm trying to keep my, uh, I want to keep my setup fairly minimal for the time being. <laughs> Negative Ghost Rider pattern is full. Uberbot, good to see you, man. Okay. So the frames come back up. We'll unpause it here. And actually, we're still... So we lost we lost maybe um, five frames by, by doing that. But we're still we're still hovering in the kind of the mid... The low to mid 30s. Um, I would say that this sim is looking pretty good. Like, with, with minimal amounts of effort, I, I think we're looking okay here. So I'm... I, I'm missing... Like, I, I missed the reflections off the ocean. I'm not sure where the water reflections went. But um, um, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. So if I can keep that, that around 30, um, that's good. So that's the default Cessna. Now, I don't actually know what the impact performance-wise of the default Cessna is compared to some other planes. So we're going to leave the sim again. Yes. We are going to copy some planes over. Let's start with the... Um, uh, let's start with the Eclipse. I think there's an, do I have a, there's no 
Eclipse Town. I think this is a new version of the Eclipse. I think I'm not running the current up-to-date version of the Eclipse, but that's fine. So we're going to go to X-Plane 11, Aircraft, Payware. We'll pop ourselves in here to the Eclipse 550 and G. So for my X-Plane 10 folder, I'm just going to copy that over. Let it do its thing. And so that's kind of a moderate plane. Um, I, I expect that that's going to be okay. Uh, let's also go and copy. So let's do this. New folder. Jets. New folder. Pistons. Okay. Pop you. Pop you. If I open the Eclipse NG folder, I'm going to rename. Oh, I'm going to get rid of that ACF file because that's the X-Plane 10 ACF. I'm going to rename that to uh, take the X-Plane 11 version of that file, rename that to the ACF. We're going to use that. And let's think of some planes that are hard on frames. Well, the PC-12 by Carinado is pretty hard on frames. So why don't we... Well, I don't even know if that's... I don't think the PC-12 is going to work. I have no idea if the PC-12 is going to work, but that's, that's historically been the plane that I have used to tune my sim. So turbo props. I'll put the PC-12 over there. So I have no idea if that PC-12 is going to do anything, um, but we might still be able to get it up in the air and, and use it for, for tuning the sim. We'll put the Epic E-1000 over there. And does this have an X-Plane 11 version? No. So I can't use the E-1000 yet because I don't have the X-Plane 11 version of that. Our, our, our choices here might be a, <laughs> a tad bit limited. Um, we could put a jet over there. I know the, uh, I know the 757 V2 is going to work. I don't have FlyJ Sims updated stuff yet, so we'll put the 757V2 there. And my goal here is just to get a to get a baseline. So we're gonna we're gonna test a number of different planes and just get a baseline to see what does and doesn't work. Um, and also to see uh, what the performance is gonna be with each of these planes. Because they all kind of do different things. And the the goal is gonna be to get the performance to kind of a um uh, to, to a baseline level. So I wanna I wanna find my hardest on the frames plane. And I want that one to put me about 25 to 30 frames per second. And then everything else we kind of build around that. And we, and we do 25 to 30 frames per second. We want that, we want that in a highly dense, a densely populated urban area. So we're testing Boston right now because I know that Boston's pretty hard on the frames. I'm also going to test New York City. And I'm going to test Los Angeles. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. Once whatever this thing is. Wow. What the hell is it copying? Holy crap. We're going to update the 757 as well. But I'm not going to pull John Fly. I'm not going to show you my key. <laughs> I'm really good to see you, man. We're just, uh, we're just doing, some, we're doing some sim setup here. We're doing some sim setup. Anything with a G1000. Yeah, G1000 is tough on the frames, but I don't know, like, I don't know if any of the Carinado stuff works. I don't have the most updated versions of some of that, so like I've, I've got to do some. I have to do some digging to uh, to get all the all the all the current stuff. Good lord! And the time it takes me to download to get this installed, I can just get the latest version of the Eclipse. Uh, pinned items. NG version 1.039. No download. <laughs> so while that's copying, um, let's call you ZZ. And we'll go to downloads. <laughs> and we'll just wait for <laughs> the latest version of the end, the, uh, the, uh, the Eclipse 550 to download. <laughs> and with that, um, we'll be, we'll be on the release version. So I, I was, I was on one of the art uh, release candidate versions, not the release version for the, uh, for the Eclipse. Pull the bellens and show the whole stream your X-Plane 11 download key. <laughs> Speedbird, that would be that would be hilarious. Alright, we'll pop you out over there. 
Let's see which one goes first. Did the flight factor the flight factor finish didn't okay so flight factor v2 all right guys disappear that and run the updater update And that is almost done. Oh, now it's going to install. Okay. Give that just a second, another second here to do its thing. I don't know what it's actually going to show when it finishes. Make sure that it doesn't show the key. I see the license key. I will now try that. This has got to be the most riveting and entertaining stream you guys have ever seen. I am the only flight sim streamer who's not actually in running flight sim. <laughs> Close that. Okay. Pop you back. Good. And then we'll go to the Eclipse. So we're going to come into the old Eclipse folder. I'm going to grab the um, my key, my preferences, and my other pref file. So pull up you. Come over to Eclipse. Pop you there. Replace. So I basically, this is how I carry my preferences over between versions. And I believe the default ACF file is now X-Plane 11 for the Eclipse. So we're good there. Okay, so let's fire let's fire the sim back up. Close, close, close. Let us fire the sim up. If I can remember where the sim is at. Where is my flight sim? Here it is. It's been eleven. <laughs> Symbolic link is another way of getting married. I don't want to learn. <laughs> T crap, good to see you, man. XP Aviator Assassin, good to see you guys. Ghost Rider, welcome aboard. <laughs> what is the FPS of the logo? I do not know. Okay, so let's start with uh, the Eclipse 550NG. Oh, crap. Right, X-Plane 11 behaves a little differently, so I have two Eclipses now. I forget about that. Okay, this is the one I want to load, though. Let's go to KBoss. Start flight. Uncooked bacon. Thanks, man. You're the first person. Well, I don't know. Somebody else may have commented on it, too. But yeah, I got my hair cut. A dolphin's fart. Welcome aboard. Good to see you. Doing great, man. KTM guy. Welcome aboard. My x 11 is a direct download from Laminar. Yes. I'm not using the Steam version. I was given a review copy. <laughs> Full disclosure. I was given a review copy of x 11. <laughs> this is me <laughs> extensively reviewing x 11 for you. When I put new planes in X-Plane 11, I never get a picture of the plane. Uh, it, the, so the, the, the author has to update the aircraft to support the new pictures. Um, if, you're, if, you're running a non, like if you're running a version that is basically ripped from X-Plane 10, then yeah, it, 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 may, not, like it may not work. Um, and it may not show the, uh, the plane. Uh, this is Payware. Yes, this plane just came out yesterday. This one just came out yesterday. Okay. Yeah, the B1900 is pretty tough on frames. I'm gonna, I'm basically gonna tune to the Eclipse. Uh, oh, I have to auto, I have to activate. Okay. Disappear you. Aircraft, payware, jets, you, key.txt. Paste. Next. Aircraft successfully activated. Please reload the aircraft. Ha! 
how do I reload an aircraft in X-Plane 11? I do not know. Apparently I can kill the sim. That wasn't hard to do. Yeah, direct means Laminar gets more money. Uh, Steam gets a chunk, and also Aerosoft gets a chunk, because Aerosoft publishes on Steam for Laminar. Developer reload aircraft. Got it. Well, I killed it. <laughs> I completely killed it. Good to know, though. We'll do that next time. Do you... Do -do -do -do. All right, let's try this again. Uh, X plane, uh, this PC, E colon, X plane 11, and X plane 11, yeah, you see. The only problem is the four years it takes the whole sim to load up, but that's okay. Boston Logan, clear skies, set that time, that plane, and that's the right one. Off we go. Hope you guys are having a good week. My first video at my new job went live today. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen a tweet that would lead to said video. If you're in Discord, I just linked to it directly. It's pretty good. I liked it. Turned out well. Get the creative juices flowing. Did my discovery flight on Sunday too. We'll talk about that more on Friday. That went uh, that went really well. So I'm hoping this weekend I can go up with the club that I'm, I'm entertaining the idea of joining and check out their plane, make sure I fit. And if I do, I'll give them a whole bunch of money and I will then start my flight training in probably two weeks. Uh, Discord is discord.gg slash catstrader. You can see the link if you look up. It's over there. Paul the Brit. Sleepless in London looking for more tips. <laughs> Paul, thank you very much for your support, sir. Cheers. London. What time is it in London right now? One o'clock in the morning, isn't it? That's um that's late. It's late, that's early. What am I training in? Um, uh, it's either going to be a Cessna 172. Uh, I think it's a 172R. Or it's going to be a Piper Cherokee 180. Um, if I join the club, it's going to be a 180. It's going to be a Cherokee 180. If I don't join the club, then it's going to be a, a Cessna 172. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. So we're five hours. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we are five hours, aren't we? Ugh. Do, 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 do. Yeah, race to sea comes after three months. And then after six months, you get the pilot edge sea. After 12 months, you get the red, the, 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 the red, the red sign. And then after two years, you get the, uh, the drowning sea. Some of that stuff may change. Okay. Close you. Okay, so what we've seen now is that the frame rates have dropped. We're, letting the, we're gonna let the sim kind of do its thing. Um, it's gonna take a couple seconds here for it to do all the X Enviro stuff and to load all the settings and do whatever it's gotta do. The video is recording, what? No, don't record video. That's probably killing the frames too. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Okay, so frames are hovering around 25. That's quite a bit lower than I want them to be. I'm not surprised that the frames have come down since we moved into a payware plane. Interesting. So let's do a couple more things. My field of view is still wrong. So let's go... I wanna say I run 80, like I, I think I was running 85. 
that it looks about right there. Okay. So 25 is unacceptable. That's that's not going to fly for me. So let's turn our let's turn our world objects back down to medium. Hit the done button and let's see if that brings our our frames down to a more acceptable level. <laughs> Explore the depths of the castrator's video log on Twitch. Got to say there's some gold. There's some crazy stuff when you go down there. Yeah. Crazy, crazy stuff. So my goal is 30 to 35 frames at a minimum here in the here in the city. I'll take I'll I'll take a little bit like I would take 27 or 28, but I'm not I don't want to go much lower than that because when you do that, you kind of you run some risks of of your sim basically crapping itself. Okay, so there's there's 28 to 30. Um, when we're just kind of sitting here on the ground in Boston. So if I come out of the plane, I go up and I look over here. Uh, the frames don't change that much. That's good. That's what I want to see. Frames are still a little lower than I would like. That's okay. Um, let's see here. I'm going to test also the reflections. If I bring the reflections down to minimal, does that change anything? Not really. Again, maybe a frame. Okay, so we'll leave that at low. We know the visual effects don't matter. So number of world objects are the things is the thing that's actually like boning my system right now. Um, actually, let's, let's, let's turn sh shadows off. If I turn shadows on scenery off, let's see if that makes a difference. Because I don't really care about shadows, right? I would love to be able to get more world objects. Well, the reflections haven't the reflections haven't actually they didn't change my FPS. That's the thing. The reflections are all in the like all seem to be on the GPU as I would expect them to be. I'm completely CPU bound right now. My GPU is is not doing much of anything. Pull this over here. Once this thing loads back up, you'll see what I'm talking about. So my GPU is running at 50% right now. Like it's literally doing practically nothing. Actually, look, Shadow's got us above 30. So shadows got us to like 32 or so. So shadows off, let's say shadows off and then world detail back to high. And let's see what that does. Lots of load screens today. Turn off draw parked aircraft. We'll try that next. Uh, I could probably move the texture quality to max, yes, but I don't know that there's really much of a gain out of it. Um, texture quality to max is gonna it's gonna almost certainly peg the uh, memory utilization on my on my graphics card, and it's not gonna give me a lot of headroom down the ro uh, road to grow into. Okay, so we're back up at we're back up to high with this with the shadows off, and we're running um, upper 20s, so that's fine. So let's take off. Let's go fly around the city. Launch this sucker out of here. I didn't put any flaps out or anything like that, because, you know, why would we do a thing like that? Uh-oh. Here didn't come up. <laughs> Hang on. Joystick. Throttle. What? All of my buttons are unbound. You stupid sim. You piece of crap. Really? Really? <sighs> All right. Well, let's just start with the important one. This is this is this is this this is why I hesitated to run X plane for so long, because I don't I still don't think it's ready for prime time. Flaps up. Flaps down. All right. Trim's moving. Gear's coming up now. So we're going to turn ourselves back around towards this. We're going to basically bring ourselves out over the city here. And I'm going to crank around, turn towards the city, and then see what my frames look like. And at that point, we will be, we will be finished with Boston. So let's 
turn it around. All right, so as I'm flying towards the city of Boston, densely populated area with Boston Logan Airport down below me, I'm running between 25 and 30 frames per second. I'm not super happy with that, but I'm also not super displeased. So we're gonna leave the settings as they are for now. So that's, that's, that's Boston, that's Boston in the eclipse. Cool, all right. Next up is New York City. Frick, sim unbinding my crap. That really upsets me. But I'm not gonna make I'm not make, gonna make you guys sit through that again. Uh, okay. Let's go to the flight menu here. Change location. Let's go to LaGuardia. And yes, start new flight. Uh, I've had the 4790K for some time now. I've had a 4790K for uh, uh, almost two years. <laughs> two Gs, ouch. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, they must have reset after the oom. Um. So it must have um, it must have kept my it must have kept all of my settings except for my except for my buttons. That's fine. I'll just I'll rebind the buttons when I'm done here. I won't make you guys sit through that again. Why would I put my visual to HDR only? So what the thing is is we looked at the visuals and it didn't change anything. The if you go if you go back and watch the VOD, you'll see that I went through each of the sliders and I determined that they did not change the FPS because they are GPU bound. So turning those down will do nothing because we are not GPU bound, we are CPU bound. More powerful, more usable, the upgrade you've been waiting for. Yeah, no, I'm not really waiting for Explain 11. Honestly, if I, w if I wasn't streaming, I would probably just stay on 10 for a while. And everybody's system is going to be a little bit different. If your GPU is what is holding you back, then yes, turning that stuff down is going to increase your frames. We are 110% CPU bound, though. My GPU is only running at 50% when it's, when it's rendering all this stuff. So everybody's setup is going to be just a little bit different. I'll try, um, I'll try getting rid of the parked aircraft, though. I actually don't want the parked aircraft. When we go, when we go run pilot edge in here, we'll, uh, we'll get that all squared away. All right. On the ground, New York City. We'll give this thing a second to load up here. Okay. So New York City. Uh, paused. Let's unpause that. New York City is running 25 to 30. Again, not ideal, but tolerable. Oh, there it comes down to 22. So actually, the New York, the New York stuff is showing that I might be um, I might be running a bit lower than I want to be. There's 19. Let's do this. Let's set the park break for now. Let's give let's give everything a second to load in here. Do whatever it's going to do. I have, a, I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to have to turn the settings down just because of this. But that's why I test multiple locations. Because then I kind of know what does and what does not work. But that is super choppy. Like, that's that's really bad. So let's do this. Um, I'm going to try again minimal. That has helped a little bit. So bringing, bringing the reflections on a minimal did help. Inside the airplane. Keeping mid to upper 20s. Oh, hey, look! Look what happened! The GPU! The G I just nailed- I just nailed my GPU. Um, by loading here in New York. Okay, that's good. That's good. So now... 
that means we're going to start bringing some more, more stuff down. So let's do the visual effects down. We'll bring it down to HDR. So when we were in Boston, the GPU was not running 100%. Now that we are not in Boston, the GPU is running pretty hard and heavy. GPU load is 70 to 85. And as I'm kind of panning around, it's 100%. So we're going to keep on coming down. I can't show you that while I pan around, unfortunately. Um, let's see. The next thing I'd bring down would probably be the anti-aliasing. Let's get rid of parked aircraft. I don't know that parked aircraft is going to change much for us. But well, we'll let it reload in here and see what happens. Why did New York Airports XP have no aircraft at the X airports? I have no idea. Belwar, welcome aboard. I had to find if I mind to incorporate LOD distances for the buildings and objects. It's bearable after that. Good to know, crazy. Fervo, good to see you. Miles ahead, welcome aboard. Chai Town Sooner, welcome aboard. Hi, Skindex, good to see you. Emery, welcome aboard. Good to see all you guys. Happy Wednesday. Okay. We turn the anti-aliasing down. We are no longer nailing our GPU when we look around. We're running about 30 frames per second. That's okay. And honestly, even with the, the anti-aliasing turned down, but it doesn't look that bad. That's, that's, that's pretty smooth still. Okay. So pop you... High, we have we, so we are able to leave the objects on high. We turn the reflections down. We got the texture, or we got the, the visual effects on high. Oh, the anti-aliasing did not come. Oh, that was just that was just turning off parked aircraft. Interesting. So just turning off parked aircraft got us like another five frames. And the anti-aliasing is still up. But the GPU load is not is not hitting 100%. So I can live with that. Let's take off. Let's do some flying around here. Now, mind you, this is not the hard. This is not the plane that's going to be the hardest on our, on our on my sim either. So we might still have to bring some of this stuff down. Bumpy. Okay, still pretty smooth. Still pretty smooth. I mean, we're looking at we're looking at craziness here in downtown New York. So if I can stay twenty, if I can stay above twenty five, pointing my pointing my nose towards New York City, that's usually pretty good, right? I can deal with that. These are all worst case scenarios that we're looking at right now. Cool. Okay, so New York City looks like it's fine, right? Are we gonna fly or just installing? I'm pretty much just installing today. Installing a configuration. We're gonna fly. We're gonna fly on Friday. So if you want to see some flying, you probably want to go find somebody else to watch. Sorry. Okay, I'm happy with that. So New York looks good. Let's do one more. Let's do Los Angeles. No. Let's do. Change location. Let's do K L A X. Boom. Yes. Scarabot driver, good to see you, man. Yes. Good evening. <laughs> do you get micro stutters or do you have threading off? Uh, haven't seen any micro stutters. Hey boss, it's JFK. You'll have ATC. I don't. I don't really feel like I'm not. I'm probably not going to do any actual flying tonight. Um, I just. I wanted to get the sim set up and configured, and I wanted to test the streaming box as well. So, is the stream looking good? That's the real question, because the stream is coming to you in stunning 1080p, 60 FPS. I'm assuming it looks okay. 
Uh, I just copy and pasted the planes. You want to make sure you have planes that are X-Plane 11 compatible. But yeah, you can just copy and paste most of them. Cool. The new streaming box took me about nine hours, eight to nine hours to configure on Saturday. Get everything set up. And the problems were numerous. <laughs> I have a seven-year-old graphics card running in that machine right now because it's the only one I could find that would work. Yeah, I figured this config and setup would be a good uh, would be a good stream because a lot of people ask me, you know, how how I do various things. Am I using the same custom scenery folder I use in X Plane 10? 100% yes. I have. I'm eventually going to have to change some of that stuff out, but for the time being, all my custom scenery is the same as what it was in 10. It's uh, it's a symbolic link that points to the exact same spot. Let's get on my man on my computer. I'll check the phone. Well, I mean that's the computer is what's going to matter. The phone stuff is all going to get um, is all going to get uh, downsampled and, and and transcoded and whatnot. All the ortho and stuff loading in. This is my sim is not a fast is a fast not a fast loader. Do I hang out with Stevo? <laughs> never met never met Stevo. I'd love to have a beer with Stevo. He seems like a, he seems like he'd be a good dude. How much space ortho takes up? Uh, my ortho takes up about a terabyte. John's takes up a lot more. Nice PJs, thanks. We get, we get the flannel on tonight. Okay, so now we're in Los Angeles. This is the final location on the tour of beating the living shit out of my computer. We are pointed at downtown right now. The frames are suffering. So the frames are only at 20 here. That's why we come here last. So what are we looking at? The GPU is at 50%. So we are completely CPU bound right now. Completely and totally C... Oh, wait. And whatever something... Whatever just loaded just finished loading in because now we're at 30. So that's great. So here's my trick. Here's my trick for tuning at Los Angeles, okay? We're gonna come back here. Uh, change location, customize, Los Angeles, um, 10 nautical mile approach. And we're gonna come in on two five right. So 10 nautical mile approach on two five right. Confirm. Go. And it's gonna go through the whole loading process again. So my, my trick for coming into LAX is to put myself on a long final for LA, okay? Because now what this has done, this has put us on final for Los Angeles International Airport. And as we're looking around, we have downtown Los Angeles off to our right. So we have a lot of buildings and sort of uh, uh, auto gin and static fo or fodder and whatnot. In front of us, we have not only the Los Angeles airport, which is now disappearing, Let's just dive. Dive! Dive! Let's do this. Next Enviro. Off. We have the Los Angeles International Airport directly in front of us. And then off to our left, we have we have um, Hawthorne. So we have a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of level of detail stuff happening right now, too. We have a lot of stuff here that kind of really gives us a chance to sort of beat down our CPU. And, um, and and kind of make things make things do what things do. So, as I'm looking around here, I'm staying at 30 frames per second. I will say that I am absolutely 110% tickled to death um, because I have now gotten the performance that I want to do. So, I suppose the last thing that I'd want to do is go to um, let's do this plane. Go to uh, how about we do Vegas? Vegas. So we're going to go to Vegas and we're going to throw the plane all the way up at cruise level. So go to Vegas, throw it up at cruise level. We'll see what the ortho looks like. We'll see what everything else looks like once we're up, up in the air. And we'll make sure the frames look good there as well. How are the temps on my CPU? Uh, I don't know. I actually don't even know what they run anymore. Um, Intel, extreme tuning utility, pull you up. Uh, CPU is currently running at 57 Celsius. 
So we'll see what the package comes up to once uh, X-Plane loads itself back in. One. It should it should stay like 75, 70, 75 max. Because the fan, like the fan isn't even spinning up. Actually, I think I have CPU-Z installed. I don't have CPU-Z installed. Never mind. Pop that over there. Explain this loading scenery files. And bludgeoning my PC. <laughs> Look at all that memory. <laughs> Suck it, P3D. CPU temp is rich of peak. <laughs> I like it. So I pick I pick Vegas because Vegas is kind of out there. Um so we should see some higher frames once it all kind of loads itself in. So the sim it looks like the sim takes it. So the way that the way that what's been happening with these with these numbers is that after like 30 seconds or so, they come up dramatically once it's probably once it's finished loading whatever it's going to load in. So I don't know. We'll give that a second there. Let's turn X and Viro back on. Interestingly, the numbers are not coming up the way I would have expected them to. There they go. Now we're at 30. Do not know what that big flash was in front of us. Do not question. Alright, so we're at 30 frames here. And the CPU is running at 52 Celsius. So it's running between 47 and 52 right now. Um, as we sit here in Vegas. And the GPU is running at 58. So my, 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 my stuff tends to run pretty cool. Um, I could probably like I could probably push the core frequency even up to 4.8 if, if I wanted to. But I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, okay, so view. Can we go to the map? Uh, where is the map? Can I lift my plane up? It used to be that you could lift your plane up. I don't know if that's going to be the case anymore. Like configuration? No. Alright, so let's do this. Let's just go. Click on the plane on the map. Okay, let's try that. Somebody said I can go show map. No, no, show iOS. Show map. Click on the plane. Ah, there we go. Altitude, 35,000 feet. And we'll do... Good, perfect. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're testing... High altitude. Once we once we have control of the plane. Interesting. Gear. Let's bring the gear in. Ah, whatever, man. We're good. We got it. Uh, 30,000. And we'll do uh, autopilot heading mode. Just keep her straight and level. So this is, this is a chance to shake down extended DSFs and how they're going to look and how they're going to behave in the sim. So I wanted to go to cruise altitude, see what things look like here. Uh, we're running about 35 frames or so per second. 30, 35 inside the cockpit, so I'm, I'm happy with that. So I go to cruise. Cruise still looks pretty good. 
can look out the windows. Everything looks pretty. Actually, we can look out the windows when we reposition the cameras. Everything looks pretty. Great. Pretty great, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Where are the contrails? I don't know. There's no contrails. There. I'll turn on the smoke. You get Josh J. Gibbs contrails. So, yeah. That's the eclipse and all that good stuff. So, I'm going to do the exact same test, only... So, New York City was the one that was hardest. So, of all the places that we went, New York City was the one that beat the, beat the, um, beat the sim the worst. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load up uh, the 757v2 in New York City. Uh, the 757v2 is a little bit harder on the frames. I think it's actually pretty comparable to, uh, to the Eclipse. But we'll load up one more plane there. And we'll see how the frames look there. And then we'll probably, uh, we'll probably end up calling it there for the night. So, let's go KLGA. Let's grab the 757 uh, That's not the right one. That's not the version version 11. All right, let's close this real quick. Go to X-Plane 11, aircraft, payware, jets, FF that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, so dot XP10. Yeah, sure, XP2, whatever. Come to you. Um, no, oh yeah, okay, so that should work right there. So that should just load right up, right? Theoretically. Let's see what happens. Explain 11. Load up explain. Scratch my nose. The rename the ACF file. I don't think so. Because there's a bunch of, so it, it, it's a valid ACF file, uh, the way that it's named right now. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> It was actually up in the airliner section. Um, great. The LGA. Dot flight. Uh, yeah, we can try the MD-80. Does the MD-80 have... I don't know if I have the right version of the MD-80, though. i got to make sure I've got the X-Plane 11 version of it. So let's see here. If we go to X-Plane 10. Aircraft, payware, jets, rotate. Uh, yes, this one has an 11 version as well. So let's, let's copy that over. Uh, explain 11. Aircraft, payware. We'll try the MD-80 as well. Copy that. That one will take a little bit to copy, though. Because it's got the full nav data folder that it's got to copy over. Or it could just go super fast and not even care. I mean, we're going SSD to SSD, so there's that. Yeah, I know it's compatible. I just don't know if I have, like, I, I run a lot of development and uh, beta versions of planes. And so, like, I, I have the release, I had the release candidate for the MD-80, but I didn't have the actual release version of it. It was the same deal with the Eclipse that we just ran. Um, so my versions tend to be uh, potentially not, not correct. <laughs> That's all right. Fancy. I don't know. This should be a pretty quick test. We'll do this one, we'll do the MD-80, and we're going to call it a night there. Right. Um, payware. Jets. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Uh... Load up my totally legitimate, not written down in a text pad file key. Okay, so developer, reload the current aircraft. Is that going to work? Let's see. Copy that. Okay. Pull you up. 
Uh, Pratt & Whitney, winglets on. Sure, whatever, don't care. Oh yeah, dude, that's super smooth. That's already running 30. So, zero problems with this plane. That's good to know. So the 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 <laughs> the uh the 757's fine. And this is completely like out of the box what it would what it would do. So I'm okay with that. I'm not worried about that at all. Great. Okay, so let's close this one more time. We're going to do one more reload with the rotate MD80. And I like to reload my entire sim between planes. Like I don't like to I don't like to go from plane to plane because things tend to get a little a little wonky. Unhappy, if you will. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna actually we're gonna do the MD80, and then we're gonna install some plugins. But just close. Carrot. Stop crashing. Stop trying to report yourself. Just close. Go away. Do, 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 do. Explain eleven. Stream quality has increased, by the way. Looking good. I hope it's increased. We went from 720 to uh, 1080. Did a lot of testing this weekend. Okay, so new flight. MD80. Uh, that one. That's the MD80 X Plane 11. So we'll load that sucker up. Uh, KLGA. Exactly what we just did. Start flight. See how this one looks. And then we'll do that and then we'll get some we'll get some plugins installed and we will call it quits there. So I'm gonna do F I'm gonna do basically all my plugins I'm gonna copy over. Uh FS Economy, Pilot Edge, and some of the other stuff. Load times in X Plane eleven is so much better. I it's honestly it's it's exactly the same for me right now. Um it's still loading all of the um it still has to load in all of the ortho scenery all of my mesh and everything else. So I, I don't expect there's going to be much, much difference in load times there. At least not for me. Your mileage may vary. Twitch.tv directory following. Is anybody else? Anybody else streaming right now? Cessna Rocks, Torbinator, both streaming. We'll go say hi to one of them here in a little bit. Oh, God. This guy. You guys, you have to go watch this guy at some point. A Wicker 18. He is... Uh, and before you go to this channel, turn your speakers down. Um, he's kind of hilarious. He was doing party shots on Friday. Like, just non-stop shots. What's my take on x 11 so far? Um... Uh... <laughs> I don't see what it offers over X Plane 10 right now, uh, to be perfectly honest. Like I just I haven't seen the kind of improvements that I was expecting, or that I would uh, that I would expect from a brand new sixty dollar product. Um, I think once they get the Vulcan API implemented and they get the you know the new G1000 in and some of the kinks get worked out and this and that, that it's going to be a really good sim. But as it is today, I just don't see the advantages over X Plane 10. Like it runs worse. It doesn't look as good. Um, it's di more difficult to find, like find options and things. Like I, I, I just got used to the X Plane 11 UI. Um, but that's, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that's going to disagree with me on that. So, <laughs> okay, rotate in the 80. So we're going to give it a second here to catch up and do whatever it's got to do. Oh, man. Whatever it's doing, it's pissed off. Did we, did we bang on our... Oh, man. Our VRAM is up there. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, 
The frame hit on the Rotate MD-80 appears to be real. Like, I think it wants to do... I don't know, and I don't know if it's X-11 or if it's the MD-80 that's, that's causing issues. Seems to have rotated my VRAM, yes. If I look down, it's nice and smooth. Like those are unusable frames right there. That's 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 below the 19 threshold, and it's not coming up either. That's um, that's not good. Try to reload. Okay, developer, uh, reload the current aircraft. I don't know why. What it is about the rotate, but I always have to reload it once on first try. Ah. Uh, were we GPU bound? Oh yeah, we were, man. 100% on that GPU. Whatever they were doing was beating the crap out of it. It's a good demonstration. Yeah, chat suggested I reload the plane, so that's what we're giving a shot here. Gonna sell the 2K cockpit texture pack. Yeah, I might have to do that. I mean, the, the VRAM, so the VRAM is not an issue at the moment because we're not like, we're not at eight, eight gigabytes. So as long as that number stays in the seven to seven point five range, we've still got overhead to load more stuff in. Oh yeah, look at that. Ha! Ah! Perfect, we're up to 30 now. Crazy. Thanks guys, that's a good suggestion. If we go outside, it's 30 to 35 to 40. Yeah, this plane, this, this works great. Uh, I don't know about how it looks. Like, there's shiny textures in some places and then not shiny textures in other places. But all this all this PBR stuff has got a lot of a lot of work to do. So yeah, 35 frames right there. I can deal with that. Okay, so the rotate works. After, after the rotate works after you reload it once. So let's do some let's do some plugins now. Um, last thing we're gonna do, we'll call it a night here. So uh, I want to install my basic set of plugins. So we're gonna go to resources, plugins within the Xplane 11 folder. I'm gonna load up my Xplane 10 folder, and I'm just gonna go copy. We're gonna go copy, copy crazy. So plugins and oh, I'm in plugins. Okay. So what do we need? We need auto gate. Not plugin admin, just plugins. We need auto gate. We want the data ref editor. Do I? Yeah, we want the data ref editor. Uh, FJCC, FFC, we're not going to worry about. It. We definitely want pilot edge. We need Python interface. We need Python scripts. Oh, we don't need the real weather connector. <laughs> we'll put X camera in there. X Enviro is already there. XFMC, not going to worry about. XUI PC, we want that. Everything else, we're not going to worry about. Don't know what the rest of those are. Okay, so there's that. And then Xplane 11, I have a, always have a folder here called Disabled Plugins. Disabled Plugins. And in the Disabled Plugins folder, we keep things like the X737 FMC, that's FJ, it's FJ CCMC. Fly with Lua, fly with Lua. We'll put Gizmo over there. We'll put the head shake over there. Uh, don't need that. Smart Copilot 2 will stick over there. UFMC, we don't need that. World traffic, I definitely don't need world traffic. No XA cars, no XA sign. XFMC, we don't need that anymore. XGS, I don't know what that, oh yeah, ground services. Ground services, XGS, I'm actually not sure what XGS is. Um, XIVAP though and Squawk Box will stick over there just for the liveries, Squawk Box we need to have. XIVAP's got some liveries that um, the uh, FS Cloud client will pull from. We'll take the FGCCs, the free gluts and the FS Cloud pilot, put those over there. I guess we'll throw the XIVAP client over there as well. So those are all my disabled plugins. So whenever I whenever I switch between Pilot Edge and, and, and X Squawk Box, I just literally cut one of them, 
move them into resources plugins, and then cut the other one and move it back to disabled plugins. And that's how I keep them from loading. I only ever load Pilot Edge or a bad sim at a time. So let's load up Pilot Edge. I, I don't suspect there's going to be any issues here whatsoever because I literally just copied Pilot Edge from point A to point B. Um, I don't want Steam. Oh, break myself of that habit. Uh, more data. It's plane 11. Uh, X plane. So I just want to make sure Pilot Edge works. Oh, XGS is landing rate. Okay. I suppose we can put pop that in there again at some point. <laughs> what did that guy's streams blew up my eardrums? I told you, man. I told you. <laughs> if you pop in there, you got to turn the sound down. All right, new flight. Let's go. Um, let's load up the Panthera. What do you say? Is that the. I don't think that's. Is that the X Plane 11 Panthera? I don't think it is. Hang on. Do I have the X Plane 11 Panthera? That might be one I have to go update. Uh, X Plane 11 aircraft, payware, pistons, Panthera. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, that is the right one. Okay, so new flight. Let's grab the Panthera. Let's go to. Uh, where's there? Is there some traffic out there somewhere? So. Map.pilotage.net. Where are the people at? Dude at LAX. It's got up in San Luis. Oh, there's a couple guys in San Bernardino. We'll go load in San Bernardino so we can see some guys moving around there. So we'll go KSBD. San Bernardino. Good there. Good there. Good there. Start. <laughs> New PC I'll be getting. <laughs> Disability is final. Better last for 3x as long for the price. How much are you spending, Wayne? J Jackal, good to see you, man. Flying Jackal, welcome aboard, sir. And the gizmo thing is necessary if we're going to fly the uh, the gizmo planes, which we may do at some point. Good to see you, though, Jack. Stealth Bob, good to see you, man. Uh, FS Economy is part of the uh, Python stuff, so the Python scripts are are what are what are controlling FS Economy. How do I get airplane photos of the airplane to show up at the start area of the sim? I only get pictures of stock airplanes. Maverick, you got to download, you got to go get updates to planes that have X Plane Eleven compatibility. So the X Plane Eleven compatible planes have the ability to take a thumbnail and have the thumbnail show up. Um, so if it doesn't have a thumbnail, it's probably not, you probably don't have an X-Plane 11 version of that plane. Oh, I know the IXEG has been sketchy since June, but I have the old version of the IXEG that's not as sketchy. I have the, I have 1.05, which actually works. Um, but no, I won't be streaming the IXCG until they, until they finally update that thing. Um, I'm not going to give them any lip service when that plane has got some serious problems. You know what? We're going to load up on the runway, aren't we? That's not where I want to be. We may have to do the loading process one more time here. I have a lot of time in the IXEG. Like, I have probably 100, 200 hours in that 733. I've flown that thing a bunch. But um, the, the, the latest update is just, like, when you want, if you want to fly the latest update online, man, it's just complete poo. Still loading up. A biscuit to see, man. Welcome aboard. Or you can click on customize for the plane and regenerate icons. There you go. Bell Geode, good to see, man. Welcome aboard, Drew. Happy, uh, happy Wednesday. Okay. So it did load us up on the runway here. And it shut my engine. Oh, yeah. Why did it shut my engine off? That's interesting. Uh, 
Uh, oh, because the fuel's off. I'll do it. Uh, let's do flight. Uh, okay, so let's 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 do some let's do some stuff here. Uh, we no longer want to start with the engine running. Ramp start. Like the fact that you can click on a spot and we'll ramp start over there. Confirm. And how do I not start with customize and start with the engines off? Great. Good, 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 good. Okay. It didn't actually move me. Move my plane! Put me on the ramp. Right there. Confirm. Go. Yeah. Okay. We're here. Frames are pretty good. Let's pull the park brake. Pull park brake is already pulled. Let's pull the park brake for real. Uh, frames are actually really smooth. Here. Look at that. Okay. So let's go to plugins. Pilot edge. Connect. Let's make sure pilot edge works. Um, we are going to be a uh, pipa. Connected to pilot edge. And we should see a plane out here. He's going to be over there, though. Where's he at? He's at the terminal. He's a B. There he is. Okay, so AI works. There's a plane. Um, if I turn on the battery... Bionics Master. I'm going to check the T-Cast real quick and see if there's anybody up in the air. We should see that for sure. Yep, this guy's in the air. Okay. Pilotage works. Everything looking pretty smooth. That loaded in all right. Uh, okay, so I wanted to test... X economies there. X economy loads. We can log in. We can try to start a flight. It's going to say, nope, you don't have anything. Great. That's what I want to see, though. X camera not worried about. X UI PC loaded in. We already checked X Enviro. Uh, everything's good. That's it. Steve PHL, good to see you, man. Mr. Cross, welcome aboard. You guys are just coming in here at the tail end. So, um, X Plane 11 is now set up and configured. I have to go rebind some keys. I'll take care of that later, though. Um, I hope you guys found this useful. Hope you found it at least somewhat interesting. Uh, I, 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 I get a lot of questions with people asking, how do you set up your SIM and how do you do this and how do you do that? And, um, the goal is to basically have a thing where I can say like, go watch that thing right there, go tab through it and, and it'll tell you. I had one of those for X-Plane 10. It seemed to be received pretty well. So, um, I'll upload this and it'll be the one for X-Plane 11. So guys, where's the easy button? <laughs> that was easy. Right. Um, I, I really, really, I truly hope you guys got something out of this. Um, and, and if not, then, you know, hopefully you at least enjoyed yourself this evening. I'm sorry for not flying. Um, it's just not, not really, I, I, I don't really have the energy to fly tonight and it's already 10 o'clock. So, um, yeah. Uh, thank you very much guys. And we will see you on, am I going to archive this? Yes. So TR6 world, the archive will be here on Twitch and it'll be up on YouTube on Friday. And uh, off we go. So, guys, uh, we'll see you on Friday. I hope we're gonna fly the. Uh, we're gonna fly this guy. We're gonna fly. No, not this guy. <laughs> we're gonna fly the uh, Eclipse E5 or the sorry, the Eclipse 550NG. Uh, we will also be giving away a copy of that at the turn. Uh, we'll be doing some Pilot Edge stuff. Where's the pilot? What is the bonus field for Pilot Edge right now? Pilot Edge. I don't think it's still Spokane, Oakland. So we'll probably go to Oakland then, uh, make a turn down there. And uh, <laughs> more importantly, we're going to see if the plane, uh, it, maybe we're going to try to go south and we'll see if the plane crashes over San Bernardino again. But guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Toodles. Duke Demon, man. You came at the perfect time, buddy. <laughs> Good to see you and we'll catch you next time. We'll see you guys.